So I want to walk you through just a little bit of photo history. Kind of starting, this, this starts around the, the late 1800s, early 1900s in Europe. Um, photography was invented in, in Great Britain, France. There were two competing uh, types of photography, uh, William Fox Talbot and his Talbot type, and uh, uh, Jacques-Louis Daguerre and his Daguerreotype. The, the Daguerreotype made a stunning photograph. But it was like so. But it was like the Instax. They're like a Polaroid. You took one that's all, and you only had you had the one. Fox Talbot actually came up with a positive negative, which is much more akin to um, what we're going to be doing. He did his on 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 paper, and I'll and I'll show you how that works sometime in the future. So Fox Talbot's Talbot type is positive negative approach to photography, essentially morphed into, evolved into what we know as film photography. In the 1840s, eight, uh, 1850s, uh, Talbot was, was, was using paper for the negatives. And then, and then the 1860s, 1870s, we moved to glass plates, all right? So the, the solution for the negative is coated on a glass plate that's dropped in a camera. Um, negative is created and the prints are made from that glass, glass negative. And that's really where we get into um, the, the modern iteration of photography. So modern photography starts with, with glass plate and then eventually um, in the 1880s, 1890s, um, George Eastman, right? We know George Eastman in Rochester found an Eastman Kodak, invented a, a, a photographic film and made photography an every man pursuit. But we're going to focus a little bit right now on, on, on some European photography. And, and the first photographer we're going to look at is uh, Eugene Agé. So Eugene Agé was a marketer, owned a store in, in Paris. And had this store that was almost kind of like a junk store and, and he, he sold props for artists. So he, he painted backdrops so an artist could hang a backdrop and do paintings and he could, um, you know, like, like props for still lifes. And, and, and so he was introduced to photography and thought this would be a really cool thing. I could make what, what he referred to as documents for artists. And 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 learn how to learn how to be a photographer. And went around Paris photographing just these these little cityscapes. And made prints and sold the prints to artists. You know, for backdrops for paintings, so they they could paint. You know, they could they could they would have something to work from when they made their paintings. And it, it's fascinating because what he didn't know he was doing was creating this catalog of, of turn of the century Paris, which was undergoing this, this huge transformation. The, the junky stuff was getting knocked down. New, better stuff was being built in its place. And the city itself was undergoing this, this, this huge evolution. And Agé was photographing it all as it was happening. Now, it's an interesting thing about, about this, um, the photographs that, that he created. Was that everything, everything is, a, is a product of its time. So back then, photography required, I don't have, I was looking for a, my, my big box camera. 
big camera sat on a tripod and you had glass plates. And so you had to go somewhere dark and load the plates into this um, box, put the box in the back of the camera, pull a dark slide, press the shutter, a little bulb open the shutter and the shutters might have to be open for 20 or 30 seconds. Close it, put it back. So because of the, the medium at the time, photographs tended to be of things that didn't move because things that moved blurred and you couldn't see them. So if somebody was walking by 20 second exposure, somebody was walking by in front of the camera, you wouldn't even see any, any trace of them. So photographs from this period tend to look, so if you're gonna see a person, it's gonna be a mannequin person because photographs on this just tend to be very quiet and un, unmoving. It's, it's just the, the nature of, of the beast at the time. And these were the, the photographs that Ajay created for his, his documents for artists. They're just, they're really, they're stunning photographs. They're, they're, they're beautiful images. So he was never really known as a photographer during his life. But right towards the end of his life, uh, uh, an American, uh, Berenice Abbott, had been visiting Europe and, and was going through Paris and happened to stumble upon his, his shop and, and began looking through the thousands and thousands of photographs that, that he had. And she was, she was just, just thrilled by what he had created and, and got him to loan her a couple hundred of his prints. And when she went back to the US, she actually arranged to have a, an exhibit of his work. And it was the first exhibit. He was in his seventies or eighties at the time. It was the first exhibit of his work anyway, because he never thought of himself as a photographer. He thought of himself as, as like a prop master. And, and so these photographs of, of Paris were shown in, in New York and Chicago um, and, and to, to quite a bit of, of you know, positive um, reaction. And then, and then Berenice Abbott, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll look at her work, we won't look at it tonight, but Berenice Abbott then actually followed in this mold and, and, and photographed New York in the same way that, uh, that Ajay had photographed Paris. Isn't that pretty though? Isn't that a really pretty photograph? I think it's just lovely. I like that one a lot. Yeah, you know, it doesn't have to be. It's just, it's simple. And that's that's one of the things that we are going to discover during this first assignment. It's simple. Start, just start simple and, and enjoy. Like sepia than like black and white. Well, you know, and that's, that's another thing to understand about um, photographs is very, very rarely are they just, just black and white. That the, because of the, the kind of chemicals that they used when they made these prints, this might be an album and print an album you take egg whites, literally, literally take five dozen egg whites and you beat them up until they turn into like foam, like a meringue, and then just let the whole thing air out for a couple of days. And it makes a like a sticky paste, almost like a marshmallow paste. And you and you paint that on a piece of glass or on a piece of paper, excuse me. And, and it dries sticky and clear. And then once you have that album on the, on the paper, then you can put your photochemicals on that and make your print. And the, the print always came out this kind of this, this sort of sepia brown. Yeah, so you'll, you'll find if you look at, at, at black and white photographs that they're sometimes they're brown, they're, they're bluish, they're kind of bricky red, they're all different colors. So and black and white can be all of these, just not actual colors, it's just like a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's tint, yeah. Right. So if if you used a if you used a, a yellowish paper, the the white the white would be tinted yellow, the color of the paper. And we we will look at that. So here's one of you know Ashe's photographs that that has a person in it, but you know dude sitting on a on a on a stool, so you know he's definitely not moving. But it was these scenes of, of Paris and the, the, the alleyways and the little stores, cafes. Isn't that beautiful? It's just a beautiful photo. 
So there's there's the start of, of modern photography. I mean, Ajay is not the first, but but he's an important photographer. Now, Josef Sudek is 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 a is a, is an important photographer, and our first assignment is based on these photographs. Our first assignment is based on Josef Sudek's photographs. So here's here's Sudek. Um, in his, you know, here in his, his 50s or 60s, um, with his with his box camera, it's a it's a four by five creates a, a four by five inch negative. Four, a little bit bigger. That's that's you see four by five is going to be. Yeah. Okay. I say four by five is about about this big. And those individual negatives that uh, pieces of film that went on the camera, and and Sudek was from uh, well, what what was what's not was Czechoslovakia from Prague, and it was it was um, Bohemia, I believe, before uh, World War One. So Sudek was a a bookbinder as a youth, um, and when you made a book. All the pages, all the pages got printed. And then you took a group of took a group of pages and you sewed them together and you stacked up all those pages sewn together and you sewed that together and wrapped it in a cover and made a book. I mean, that's how books were made. They were books were handmade pieces of things. Sudak was an apprentice book binder and then and then fought in World War One. And was injured and and lost lost his arm lost his right arm. Was late teens early twenties at the time I forget his exact age. So as he's recovering from his injuries, he's introduced to photography um, and and someone felt that uh, he's working with the camera would would you know was good good physical therapy, occupational therapy, um, psychological, mental therapy. And so, so Sudek started taking photographs and, and it was something he could do with, with one arm because a, a camera on a tripod, you can carry it around like, like, like he was carrying it around. You can, you can carry it around, set it down. You can, you can work this whole camera with, with one hand. And he created a, a body of work of still lifes and florals and cityscapes that are just just unsurpassed in their their simplicity and beauty. There are a couple of themes that you will see show up in in these Sudek photographs. You'll see that that heavy wooden table that this glass and the eggs are on. Glass full of water, this glass or other glasses full of water is another, another theme, a motif that shows up. And the eggs, bread, and, and, and flowers and roses. And he photographed in his apartment and he photographed stuff that was, that was right around, flowers that he had picked and that were in glasses on the on the on the shelf by the window photograph he would set up these still lives on this heavy wooden table that was you know not only the kitchen table but it was like the everything table and he made these he made these beautiful still life photographs experimenting with light coming through the window and that the the way this cut glass makes the makes the egg turn into different facets behind it and they're just they're just remarkable photographs. So you see this 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 theme that repeats, right? You see the table again in this photograph, plate with uh, you know with a cut melon and a an empty bottle of uh, empty water bottle, it's still cold and and has the condensation on it, which is another motif you see in his photographs. This is what, one of my absolute favorite photographs of all time. 
and it's it's just so simple and and so beautiful. The uh, the the roses in this glass full of water. There's like a conch shell sitting on this windowsill and books and some other stuff, and and you can tell it's 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 cold outside or it's you know it's you know, there's there's condensation on on the window. The lights coming in from behind the lights it's backlit the lights coming in through the glass so we're kind of seeing more of the shadowed side of this image. But it's just a simple like found still life. It, it, it doesn't even, it doesn't have the, give you the impression that's been arranged. So it's like, oh, wow, look what I, look what I've noticed. Look what I've seen. And that's, that's a really nice way to approach this, this first round of photographs that we're going to create. This is a little bit more elaborate still life set up a plate with some kind of a, you know, little stone fruit or cherry or something in it. And um, there's, there's some, some tool and some other, other, stuff hanging about there's some back backdrop stuff here is that a wine glass in there uh it looks like a wine glass in the background yeah okay you know or this this photograph of of the chair sitting behind the lace curtain with the light coming in through the through the window just a just a stunning stunning photograph and, and so simple so simple and, and you know unpretentious. Uh, you know the the, the the shed behind his apartment, the laundry's hanging on the line. Actually, that's not yeah. And then there's um, you know again you can you can see there's kind of fog on a, on on window glass. Here's a, a winter scene. So you see the snow, light snow on the ground. And again, the 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 frosted window is is just beautiful. And then there are photographs from around uh, from around uh, Prague, where he was photographing. We're we're going to our our we're going to look at we're gonna we're gonna base excuse me, we're gonna try this again. We're going to base our first round of photographs off of Sudex photographs, photographing around the house, photographing things that are familiar. And while we're doing that, then I get to, I get to show you a different approach. Tina Modati, one of, one of a great, uh, great photographer. Now Modati started her career actually as an artist model, and she worked for Edward Weston and a few other uh, important photographers in Carmel, California, California in 1920s, 19, 1920, 1930s. She was Italian, moved to the US um, to try to get into the movies. Um, she was interested in photography and painting, she was interested in dancing. And so worked as, a, as an artist model, but then learned the craft of photography from Edward Weston and some other photographers. She and, and, and Weston spent a lot of time in Mexico. It was during the period of the, uh, the, the Mexican Revolution. And she became very interested in the, in the plight of the working people and, and, and the communist ideal, ideal that was, was uh, becoming popular and created a series of photographs that were, were very prophetic and, and focused on on everyday life in Mexico and, and the power and the strength of the people. So her early photographs were actually are pretty devoid of people. And, and, and you know, this, this amphitheater, the, the, the stone benches um, could almost be a still life the way it's, the way it's set up. And it's, it's, you know, it's got this beautiful, this beautiful curve that, that starts you in the foreground and moves you into the photograph and then moves your eye around. So your eye starts down at the bottom and then, then works up towards the top. This is an awesome photo. This is an absolutely awesome photograph, in my opinion. 
the simple stairway, the stairs go down and they turn. And, and the, whole, the, the whole thing begins to kind of work its way around. Just lovely. And look at all those, those beautiful just tones of, of gray. Everything, everything, it really goes from dark gray to light gray. There's really not a pure white or a, you know, a rich black. There's just a little bit of evidence of it. An unmade bed with hairpins. It's simple, again, simple, unpretentious photograph. You can still like almost feel like the, the the body heat that's left in the bed in the in the in the sheets and, and blankets and then this this pile of, of just just barely aging white roses just beautiful beautiful stuff so it's one of the things that i want you to to really look at when you're creating your photographs is simple still life stuff and, and, and situational photographs that you can find around where you live. Now, here's some, here's some of Modati's later photographs when she was embracing communism, the hammer and sickle and the Mexican people. That's really cool. It's a great photo, isn't it? A nice, it's a nice still life, yeah. Really strong. The light's coming from the back or like over, overhead and creating those, those strong shadows. Um, all the workers reading one of the uh, communist newspapers. So if you look at it, you just see everybody, you see the heads. If you look up the very top in the center of the photograph, you see one person looking back out at us. That's very cool. And then all the people in there, in their hats. So she became, as, as she um, worked through, she became more and more political in, in the way she created her photographs. The first ones are just, they're just beautiful photographs. Now these become much more politically uh, explicit in, in their portrayal. Okay, we're gonna take a break here. I'm gonna take care of my Sophie. And we'll come back, it's 25 after, we'll come back at 7.35. I'll, I'm gonna to try to have you out of here by eight. Um, we're going to look at a couple more photographers, minor white, and uh, then um, I'm gonna give you your assignment. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna check out here. I will see you in 10 minutes. Peace. I, I can just, turn off my camera if it's too distracting. No, I like no, I like it. It's fine because I'm going to do a share, so it's going to be minimized. Um, so I'm going to okay. go back. I'm going to go back to a screen share here, and I, I do enjoy it. And we're going to look at uh, at Minor White, and Minor White is also a a pretty special photographer. Um, Minor White was. Uh, in the Navy during World War II and learned photography uh, in the Navy. And then when he, when he left the Navy, he um, got a job teaching, uh, taught at Rochester Institute of Technology at RIT, taught there for a while, lived in Rochester for a number of years, um, taught at MIT in Massachusetts, and then, and then eventually worked his way out to California where he worked as part of the, the new school out there and developed this philosophy of teaching, which I particularly like. And the, the way his, his school operated independently from a lot of other things going on uh, at the school he worked for and essentially people would, people would come in and become, and, and for a long time he hosted this out of his house and people would, would come in, start the semester whenever it was then they showed up and they would stay until they decided to leave. 
And so it was almost more of a commune than it was a school. And, and so people would kind of, you know, time in, time out. And their day essentially started out with a group breakfast. Everybody got together, had breakfast in the morning. And then they would discuss what was going to happen during the day. They'd clean up, put everything away. And, and he would either teach some lessons or they would go out and photograph uh, with you know, an assignment. And then everybody would come back mid-afternoon, develop their film. While their film was drying, they would, they would make an early dinner and they'd, they'd have dinner, talk about, talk about their day, what they did, what they photographed. And then after dinner, they, they went to the dark rooms, got their film and they, they printed all evening. And then late at night, sometimes 11 o'clock, sometimes midnight, depending on, 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 on how the day was, they, they would critique the work. So at the end of the day, they would hang the prints up and put them on, a, on an easel and, and they would critique everybody's photographs. And the next day they would just, they would just go start it again. And I've always, I've always loved that philosophy towards teaching that it's just, it's just real. There's this synthesis that, that happens, things, things, you know, moving in, moving out constantly. And so Minor White was teaching in the, the, in the, the fifties, the sixties through the 1970s. And among the people that that went through his school was uh, Diane Bush, who was one of my teachers at, at uh, Villa Maria College in Buffalo, and uh, Terry Lindquist, who was my graduate advisor uh, at Fredonia, at SUNY Fredonia. So they were both students of Minor White. And then I was a student of theirs. And now you're a student of mine. And, and my philosophy towards teaching is really embedded very deeply in, in this minor white philosophy that you, you go out and you discover for yourself what's important for you, uh, what photographs give you joy, what photographs gives you satisfaction. In the same way that, that the Josef Sudek photographs for him were about exploration and learning and healing, minor white's photographs are about exploration uh, and, and, and learning and, 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 and joyousness. So we'll look at a couple of his photographs here, which don't seem to want to change. There we go. Minor White comes out of sort of a, an abstract school of photography. So a lot of his photographs are metaphors. And you know, photograph of like like this this this. Uh, I'm not even sure what kind of uh, flower it is that's opening, but you know the the way it's opening, it's revealing the seeds inside. It's just it's not so much a a picture of a flower as it is the sign of of birth and regrowth and regeneration that that he's showing us. At the same time, it's just an absolutely awesome photograph. Uh, photographed again on that 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 four by five film, so that 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 film about about this big, single piece of film that dropped in a box camera, really close up, probably just a few you know inches away, maybe maybe you know four six eight inches somewhere in that range. But what we see when we look at this photographs is not necessarily a, a flower or a bud opening, but we, we see we see the movement, we see these waves. You can the, the feel the, the, the texture of the leaves as they're opening, and you can kind of see the hardness of the of the seeds inside. And, and it's just this, this beautiful rendition of, of this, this repetition of, of form and shape and tone. You can see the, the more, the longer you look at it, the more you begin to see in it. You can see the, the dark leaves in the background, just barely light enough so that you can see them a little bit out of focus from the large aperture. And you can see some of the, the feathered edges of the, the, the bud to the lower right. You can see the, the hard edge of the uh, light shining off a couple of the, the, the leaves beginning to open and that the soft feathered edge of, of the, the texture of the leaves. Just fascinating stuff. 
and 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 White's photographs were all kind of centered on this this removal of of the thing that's being photographed from from context. So we see this this shell of a boat. But we don't know where it is. We know when it is. It looks like it's winter, but we don't know where it is if it's you know close to the water we would assume it is but there's just there's no context for understanding where this is and that that's a key for for minor whites photographs um spent a lot of time photographing along the uh, ocean front in carmel photographing trees against the water against the sky and and was following a um a philosophy of, of, of called the the equivalent, the the photograph as a, as a metaphor for for something else. He did a lot of of, of figure studies, photos of, of his actual students, uh, models that he hired to, uh, you know, pose for the students. So there's a lot of figure studies and that which are all very abstract as well. Um, you know, in this one we see, and we're, we're seeing, he was a, a practitioner of yoga, which was, which was not very common at the time. And you see a lot of uh, yoga movements in um, the figures that he photographed. Really cool photograph, this woman walking down the stairs and slow shutter speed, so everything is blurred. The only thing that's not blurred is her, is her, her one foot, which was you know, you step down on the stair and everything as the other leg swings by, that, that's the one part of her body which didn't move during this exposure. Very cool. Photograph of the moon lighting the clouds at night along the ocean shore. It's pretty awesome. That picture reminds me of uh, one of the pictures of Nessie. <laughs> Oh, like that's interesting. Totally, yeah, I could totally see Nessie. Sure, you, you out bet. Of the water. Yeah, you're right. Right, I know. I know the photograph that you speak of. Yeah. So this this one has always been one of my favorites. This is a pretty cool photograph, and you know, I at first it's you know this 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 kind of you know this this dead carcass of a, of a tree in front of these rocky cliffs out by the you know by the ocean shore. At first, I thought it was, um, you know, about old age and and coming to grips with with you know death and but but it's but it's not and 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 it, and it it took me a while to figure out it was when i realized that he was a yoga practitioner this is actually kind of what do they call it? is it the eagle pose or the tree pose right where we, i can't do it my my arms do not wrap around real well you wrap around you're on on one leg and you wrap your leg around that this tree is actually kind of a a yoga pose Vines growing against the fence post in the spring. Now this one, this is a really cool photograph. When I, I went to visit um, Terry Lindquist, um, right when I was, I was finishing my graduate work, he invited me, he invited me to his house to uh, look at some photographs and just go through my portfolio and, and hanging on the wall in his house was this photograph it was about it was about a five by seven so it was you know a little bit bigger than than maybe you know about about this size five by seven photograph in a in a in a white mat in a white frame hanging on the wall and it was actually hung really low it's hung almost at that waist level so you either had to sit down or you had to you had to crouch or kneel down to to look at this photograph and it was a, 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 a print that was given to him by Minor White. And the title of this photograph is Peeled Paint. And as you look at it, you realize what you're looking at. You're looking at, <coughs> excuse me, peeled paint on a wall, beginning to curl and break and, and, and pull away. And it was it was it's a it's an extraordinary photo. The photo this 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 image doesn't do the print justice. And the whole the whole print was set up, and 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 he was told that it had to be mounted low. 
So it became a meditation. So when you were looking at the photograph, you had to get down, you had to, you had to become kind of in an uncomfortable place and you had to remove yourself from the context of the world. So, so everything around you disappeared and you just, you just focused on this photograph. And it was just such an awesome experience to, to kind of just crouch down and, and look at this photograph. But it's, it's part of that wonderment of minor white that that's an important thing to to know as a beginning student that you want you 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 have to open yourself up to these possibilities and and nothing is too silly to be photographed and and no approach is wrong until you find out what works for you 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 try everything and then you begin to narrow down the things that really that really speak to you whether it becomes portraiture, whether it's still life photography, or just photographing people on the street and, and you know doing documentary work like that, you find something that that speaks to you. You find something that that you find very satisfying. And this first assignment, you're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do this first assignment visual or visual or uh, digitally. So you can use your phone, you can use a digital camera if you got one. If you want to try shooting it on film, that, that's great, but, but that may be pushing it for, for a lot of us. Now, this, this assignment is written for a, a, a class that actually meets together and works in a dark room. So there's some things we're going to just forget about right now. Um, we're, not, we're not worried about sources of light in this assignment. But, but here's, here's what's going to happen. We're going to follow some of the, the approach of, of Yosef Sudek and Minor White. And we're going to photograph the familiar. We're going to photograph stuff that we have around presented to us already. And we're going to work on this in, in three different categories. Category one is a series of photographs that's, that's taken in the room where you sleep. So pay particular attention to the quality of the light in the evening, in the morning, when, when you, when you first are leaving the room in the morning or, you know, waking up and, and just, and, and then at night when things start to change, pay attention to that room later in the day, earlier in the morning. Now, you, you can, go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, Do you want us to take pictures um, of both the evening and the morning? Sure. It doesn't, it, does, it doesn't have to be, but yeah, but, but you, should, you should experiment at both times. But it, okay. does not, it does not have to include both, both day and night, morning and evening. But I want you to, I want you to focus, because that's when, that's when the light is going to be something that, that really uh, lends itself to. Now, I mean, so you can photograph, you know, it could be stuff on the dresser, it could be clothes hanging in the closet, it could be a self-portrait in the mirror, it could be light coming through the window, it could be a made bed, an unmade bed, it can be anything. There's, there's no right or wrong with this. You know, if you want to do a little still life, shoot a still life. If you want to do a more of a scenic thing, shoot a scenic thing. But experiment and, and try lots of different approaches. What we are going to do is, is take these photographs. I'm going to teach you with Lightroom and Photoshop how to convert them into black and white. And then tint and tone if you want to tint and tone and, and make prints. And that's, and that's how we are going to work with our film the rest of the semester. So this first assignment and a big part is teaching us how to use some of the other, the, the, um, um, the digital tools that we need. So first category, the room where you sleep. Second category is the rest of the home. Anywhere, anywhere inside. So the room where you sleep is, is a particular choice for, for, for category number one. The rest of your living space, from basement to attic, if you got it, is, is where, where the second category is going to take place. If this is digital, you yeah. said that we can use our phones and stuff. Would it be our? Oh, I lost you. Would there. it would it be all right if I used my um, 
in stacks? Sure. And if if we can if we can play with with like like actually make like digital copies of them to play with in Lightroom. But yeah, go ahead. Shoot the shoot the instax. You bet. Because I'll show you what we're what you're going to do with them. What we'll do with them then will be very similar to what we're going to do with the film. But for sure, use the instax. Okay, so inside the room where you sleep, the second category is is the rest of the rest of where you live. And then third category is outside the place where you live. So you could take that to be as small or large as you want. It could be photographing the perimeter of where you live, the lot that that place is on or the block that it's on could be the town that you live in. It does it doesn't matter to me. So we're, we're, we're working from this, this room to a larger space to a larger space. And we're looking, we're looking for still life photographs, scenic photographs, photographs of people are fine. But we're going to, we're, we're, we're looking for, for discovery. We are looking for, um, you know, seeing something new in the familiar that we look at every day. So that that's our, our goal with this. And and when the assignment's done, you're going to you're going to return two photographs from each category. So there'll be six all together for this assignment. 